this section on the ear, we'll look mainly at the external and middle ear. The inner ear is so delicate and so completely encased in hard bone that it can't be well shown by dissection. We'll start with the external ear. The external ear consists of the auricle, which projects from the side of the head, and the external auditory meatus, or ear canal, which passes inwards to the tympanic membrane. We'll look at the auricle first. The folded outer rim of the auricle is the helix. The helix spirals down into the floor of the central concavity, the concha. The rim of the concha is defined by this curved ridge, the antihelix. Two projections, the tragus and the antitragus, partly hide the entrance to the external auditory meatus. The shape of the upper three quarters of the auricle is determined by the cartilage that forms its framework. We'll divide the auricle along this line to see the cartilage. Here's the cut edge of the auricular cartilage. It's highly elastic. The skin of the auricle is attached to the cartilage closely on the front, less closely on the back. The lowest part of the auricle, the lobule, contains no cartilage. To look at the external auditory meatus, we'll remove the auricle and the surrounding skin. The external auditory meatus is lined with skin. It isn't straight. It curves slightly upwards, then slightly backwards. The external meatus ends medially at the eardrum, or tympanic membrane. This is part of the tympanic membrane. We'll see all of it in a minute. The outer part of the external meatus is supported by a partial tube of cartilage. Here's the cut edge of the cartilage. It's continuous with the cartilage of the auricle. To see it better, we'll remove the surrounding soft tissue. Here's the cartilage of the external auditory meatus. It extends much further below than it does above. To see where we are, we'll take a look at the same area in a dry skull. Here's the bony opening of the external auditory meatus. The cartilage of the external meatus is attached to bone here. Here's the beginning of the zygomatic arch. Here, just below it, is the temporomandibular joint. The condyle and neck of the mandible lie just in front of the external auditory meatus. Going back to the dissection, here's the capsule of the temporomandibular joint. With a finger in the external meatus, it's easy to feel the condyle moving. Now we'll remove the mandible so that we can look at the external meatus from in front. Here's where the cartilage of the external meatus attaches to bone. We'll remove the cartilage to see the bony part of the external auditory meatus. This brings us closer to the tympanic membrane. Here it is. To get a complete view of it, we'll remove this part of the bone. This is the tympanic membrane. It separates the external meatus from the middle ear or tympanic cavity. The tympanic membrane is so thin that it's partly transparent. This small upper part of the tympanic membrane, the pars flaccida, is slack. This much larger part below, the pars tensor, is tense. The tense part of the tympanic membrane has the shape of a shallow cone. It's drawn inwards by its attachment to the handle of the malleus, which we can just see here. The apex of the cone, where the tip of the malleus is attached, is called the umbo. The tympanic membrane faces downwards and forwards. This is a true lateral view of it. When seen from the side, it's to 